Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74. Do not mind the deep DJ voice, as I'm clearly struggling with a cold or whatever it is. This video is about OLED in gaming, and I got an interesting comment this morning on a video I posted a few months back about OLEDs and if people are actually gaming on them, and should you avoid it, and it was one of those videos where I put a question to the community. I'll also link that in the description so you guys can see all the comments, because there are a lot of them with people that either game daily and they're fine with it and there's other obviously others that have issues with their OLEDs and there is a mixture of it being panel by panel um, in my opinion if you have an OLED and it burns in in 10 minutes it's clearly a defective panel in other cases it's from usage now I'll read you the comment which was on the video right there which is interesting, the comment below that um, kind of contradicts it, but here's the usage. Um, Cloud and Clouds commented, Well, it happened to me after a year of owning the C7, thanks to Destiny 2, but I got insurance, I have insurance, on mine getting screen replacement next week. Guys, if you game more than four hours a day, don't get OLED seriously. I heard scary stories where people have burn-in and LG does nothing for them. $2,000 down the trash you know, talked about not having an OLED, not wanting an OLED. So, Black Friday's coming up. A lot of you are about to purchase new displays. We'll do a video in a few days about my top displays of the year and my favorite displays of the year. Um, and OLEDs are at the top of the list. Um, I have no issues with them. I think they're the best picture quality out there in terms of contrast, in terms of picture quality, in terms of its motion. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, this is not an OLED you're seeing. This is a Sony 900E. But people ask me why I don't have one. Um, so we'll cover that quickly as well. Um, because my display in my home theater is primarily gaming versus movies. Um, so people think that's why I don't have an OLED. And that's why I have an LED. Is primarily because gaming is what you're seeing mostly on this channel. Um, which isn't... 100% accurate. What you don't see on this channel is movies and shows simply because of copyright. Um, can't really post Blu-ray reviews, they get taken down, things of that nature. So a lot of times you're seeing gaming in the background and it's been a subject. Um, just the, the nature of YouTube, guys, I'm sorry. But for myself personally, yes, the display downstairs is used primarily for gaming. So the main reason I don't have one is the display you're seeing in the video is 75 inches at the time of purchasing this display. A 77 inch OLED was about 15 to 20,000. Now they've come down to about 9 to 10,000. That's still a bit much, um, <laughs> if I do say so myself, that's a little bit much for a display. Um, but my apprehensiveness initially with OLEDs was peak brightness and then burn-in um, was what people think. For me, I had a plasma for years, so burn-in isn't something I'm actually afraid of, um, especially as I've educated myself a little bit more knowing the, the cause of burn-in or image retention, which are, which are different, by the way. Um, and image retention dissipates or disappears in a little while where uh, burn-in is permanent, which is why it's called burn-in. I know, common sense. However, the reason I don't have it, and also the ABL feature of OLEDs, which would limit the peak brightness, is something I'm not a huge fan of. But being around a number of OLEDs and seeing them in action, I don't feel they're dim at all. I love the picture quality, even in gaming. There's a lot of people talking about Black Crush, things of that nature. I haven't really experienced that myself. I think they look tremendous. Um, so I don't have it primarily because of the size. Once you have a certain size display, I find it very difficult to go back down in size. I enjoy having 4K as large as I possibly can. So that's the main reason I don't have it, but a lot of people have said in the comments they think I don't have it because of image retention or burn-in. But I'll tell you, the plasma I have upstairs, I've gamed on it a lot. It does not have any burn-in at all. And to me, they're very, very similar. Um, the way they operate and the way the burn-in is affected and what causes it. So those are my reasons for not having it. The other part is the reasons you should not consider them or consider them. And the reason I'm showing you Halo 2 right now is in the video, um, the guy had mentioned Destiny 2. I have Destiny 2. I don't play it multiplayer, but the heads-up display is very similar. <coughs> Excuse me. So when people think about burning, they're thinking burning is this. The gun, 
the backgrounds, getting that stuff to burn in. And I know this is common sense to many of you, but it's the heads-up display. It's the grenade in the corner. It's the map on the left-hand lower corner. It's the Team Slayer words, the numbers, and the ammo counter. These are the things that really don't change. They stay on the entire time. Now, I'm not going to judge anyone that plays a game four hours a day every day. Um, is that excessive? I'm not one to say that's excessive if that's somebody that plays. What I would say is that I think you would have to consider the type of gamer that you are, which I think is first and foremost. Even on newer titles like Battlefield 5, you can see that the HUD is still pretty solid. Now, no, the numbers are moving, but those other images are static. So I mean about knowing the kind of gamer you are. If you're playing Destiny four hours a day, every day, um, but it's the same game, PUBG, things of that nature, I'd recommend not only not playing it four hours a day, but switching up the type of content. You know, do you play anything else other than FIFA, other than, other than COD, other than whatever game you play? That's, for me, the main culprit. Not so much the time that they're playing. I mean, four hours is a long time, um, especially if you're not taking any breaks. You know, they do recommend taking breaks in between. And I hear a lot with people telling me that, you know, hey, I shouldn't have to babysit a display. Um, and that's your opinion. You're welcome to it. My opinion is anything that's high-end, anything, your cars, is going to need some special care. And OLEDs are in that class. Does that mean you shouldn't have one for gaming? You know, the question is, again, what kind of gamer are you? Myself, I'm a hardcore gamer. I love playing video games, but I don't play often. And I very rarely play the same thing. A lot of single-player campaigns. I vary my usage. So an OLED for me would be no problem. Before this game, I had Halo in. I'll have in God of War. I'll switch it up. So for those of you that think you should limit the thought process of having an OLED, I would say analyze the kind of gamer you are. If you're someone who wants to play a certain type of game and that's all you play, then it's not going to be for you. And it's something that you should look at in terms of how to play and the kind of content that you're looking at is basically the rule of thumb. It's excellent picture quality. The motion in it is phenomenal. So it's hard to say you can't. You know, for me, I recommend if you have young kids, if you're going to be playing, you know, the same games over and over, the same content over and over. A lot of my crew from the UK, a lot of the channels they have down there um, have the station logo in the corner the entire time, even through commercials. That's something that you're going to want to be leery of and something you're going to want to avoid. Um, so it's not just gaming. It's your Netflix menus, your Hulu menus. So you would want to put in your screen, um, your screen savers for everything, for your PlayStation, your Xbox. It can be managed, but like the guy said in the comments, it sounds like he's playing, and hopefully he jumps in the comments, it sounds like he's playing the same game four hours a day, every day, nonstop. And burning is real. That is going to happen if he's playing the exact same title. Not because of the gun, not because of anything, not the surroundings, but because of the heads-up display. Now, in a game like Doom, if you look at how faded the heads-up display is, the HUD, is it has that in the options. And I'll show you that right now. Advanced options. Yeah, oh, excuse me. Heading all the way down to UI opacity. Is you can control how bright or how bold. And it says right there, adjust the opacity of the UH, um, HUD UI. Lowering it may prevent color burn-in on OLED television sets. I'd like to see more manufacturers adopt this. It does prove to you that OLED or OLED burn-in is a real thing and something to be mindful of. But again, in my opinion, it's simply the content, how long you play, if it's not a defective, not an effective panel, and limiting it as far as also, like I said, not just the time but the same game over and over and over. If you know that's all you play, if you're a Counter-Strike person, that's all you do, just limit that. And if you can't manage that, then OLED's not for you. But I can't dissuade you from purchasing one because they are amazing, they look fantastic, and they're great for gaming. Just be careful. In the comments, if you have an OLED, this has happened to you, please comment. I'll link the other video in the, the description below. Thanks as always.